Hello and today we're going to be reviewing this material from Colorfab. Filament is pronounced as alpha and according to Colorfab it's an ultimate bioplastic. Active ingredient is polyhydroxyalkanoids or BHA. Alpha is available in three colors, natural, black and white and is around $33.5 and a half dollars for 750 gram spool. This filament is created by a naturally occurring process called fermentation. By feeding bacteria natural sugars and oils, the bacteria create fat cells, the PHA. The best thing about PHA? Microorganisms can eat it again at the end of the product's lifeline. I have ordered two spools of alpha black and this is how the packaging looks like. It is winded nicely and it looks dark gray. I have also ordered a small sample pack for Alpha White and Alpha Natural. Here you can see a full list of pros and cons of the material, so if you care enough, please pause this slide and just have a look. Here you can see technical data sheet, so again, please pause and have a look if you care. Here you can see the print screen of the images Colorfab is using to promote their Alpha material, so pretty much only three images. And let's see if we can come up with something similar. So this is how all three colors look like stacked next to each other and I'm just going to be showing you one next to each other and just a few observations. So white definitely most pronounced layer lines. Although all of them have been printed with identical print settings, I was using 0.4 millimeter nozzle for all of them. Sizes of these printed samples are slightly different and all of them have been printed uh, from two pieces each. And later on in the video I'm going to be reviewing uh, all the other issues that I had with this material. There is no profile for alpha in the Prusa slicer, so I used PLA PHA template as a base and then modified cooling and speed sections as you can see on the screen. If you pause here, you will be able to see some color fabs advice how to successfully print this material and avoid warping. I have printed this mini pagoda tower which I stick into a plant pot that will be staying outdoors. Let's call this one a sculptural vase. This is mimicking uh, the vase that you saw as a sample from Colorfab's website. Mine is from black, theirs was from natural. And then I printed a couple of boxes, one smaller, one bigger, and each box consists of minimum two pieces. So these photos that you're seeing of the final objects, they are post-processed. I use just sanding paper for that. To reduce warping, Colorfab is recommending to use Brim and 3D Lac, but because this is a test, I decided not to use Brim and no 3D Lac for the initial print, and clearly, well, obviously you can see a bend in the middle, so warping is an issue if you don't use any Brim or any 3D Lac. For the second print, I only use Brim, and as you can see, result is a little bit better. Unlike PLA or PETG, this material, once cold, does not lose its property to adhere to the sheet, hence removing it from the the sheet is always going to be a little bit of a game so but at least if the print is small it's not that complicated to do after removing it from the bed you have to remove the brim but you know it didn't prevent me from having this warp so it's uh it's not ideal so brim plus 3d lac obviously best results but still a bit of warp and boy i have to tell you to remove brim with 3d lac on a cold sheet is is impossible guys so color fab is basically saying if you're struggling to remove your print from the sheet once it's done put the plate back on the heat pad and heat it to 90 degrees and then the bottom layer should crystallize and that's when you should be able to remove the print so i basically did what it was advised and uh, once you remove the sheet from the plate because it immediately cools down it's still impossible to remove the print so i was so so frustrated so i managed to remove the big pieces but i still had the brim remaining and i tried all possible means to do that i used all possible scrapers that i had i sharpened them with sanding paper but nothing was working so i just had to resort to stainless steel shaving razor and uh, of course this is uh, depressing because i ruined my uh, satin uh, sheet and to finish the job i placed the sheet on the heat bed heat it to 90 degrees and then i just used isopropyl alcohol to rub the remaining pieces off satin sheet is the most versatile sheet from Prusa's products range you can literally print anything on it so i was definitely frustrated but you know i didn't give up let's see what i can do and i could google and google suggested that some people use gaffing tape 
for their prints. So maybe this is an old school method. I never tried it, but it kind of made sense to me. So I thought, okay, I'll protect my sheet. And then, so I put gaffing tape, I sprayed 3D lac and let's see how it prints. So Prusa MK4 surprised me. It really calibrated Z axis to a point where first layer was perfect. Well, but my happiness didn't last very long. And so this is basically how it turned out. Um, complete failure, but you know, at least I didn't ruin my sheet again. And just to prove that I wasn't trying to print something impossible, this is uh, ASA print on the same satin sheet with the same bottle of 3D lac. So you can see there was uh, a bit of a warp happening around the base of the object, but otherwise it worked. And uh, even better results with PEG without any 3D lac on the same satin sheet. So, you know, it's uh, definitely an issue of the material. But again, I didn't want to give up. So I thought, look, I'm going to try to do what I did with the ASA print. I'm going to use 3D lag, but I'm not going to use any brim. So it started off pretty well. You can see a bridging is going pretty strong and uh, it's quite cool. But then I saw on the rounded part, I saw early stages of warping. So I stopped the print. I thought, look, it's not worth it. And this is how the removal of the print went. So I put the print sheet on the hotbed and crank it up to 90C. Uh, you know, I tried 90C, I tried 100C, I tried 120C. And then the moment I remove it, it starts cooling down. So there's not much uh, time that uh, is left for you to remove the print off the sheet. So all four uh, smaller parts uh, worked quite easily. But for the central part, I was like, man, what is happening? I just cannot even force the scraper to go under i can't peel it off with my hand like what is going on how is it even legal to sell some material that you know you can't remove from the sheet like you know i heat it up i take it off but it's just clear that it doesn't work so like i was thinking look even if uh, the print didn't fail like how on earth i was gonna remove it so i have a hammer so i started hammering and it was uh, kind of working but i was like very very annoyed because like half of this sheet is already ruined by the razor blade and then i didn't even know if i'm gonna be able to salvage this one but then I was telling to myself, look, man, don't be so dramatic and then just finish the job. So with patience, I managed to scrape everything off. The sheet wasn't ruined. I used isopropyl uh, whilst the sheet was uh, heating up. So everything removed quite well. But then I was thinking to myself, look, man, there must be a way how to actually do it much better because this just does not make any sense. So I thought, look, I'm just going to keep testing this material, but I'm not going to use 3D lag again. And I think this was the moment of breakthrough. So I opened my window, I opened the enclosure, all the fans 100%, like try to drop the temperature as low as you can. This material loves cold. Then add a big brim, like eight millimeters. So pretty much that's what Color Fab is recommending you, like 20 times the thickness of your nozzle. And then for small parts, like almost no warping. It's good. And when it comes to print removal, then just don't remove your sheet from the heat bed. Like just crank it to 90C and use wooden scraper. Sharpen the spatula or whatever you have because plastic scrapers won't work. They will start melting. But if you use like wooden scraper, man, look, it just comes off easy as butter. And the best thing is that wood is never going to ruin your sheet. So it's totally safe. This was like a eureka moment for me, guys. So here I'm just removing the brim from all the printed parts to further inspect. And I can tell you that this was a successful print. I'm like so happy. And uh, my further observation is that uh, the dimensional stability of this uh, filament is really good. Like especially if you're printing smaller parts, like it's, uh, it's doable. You can use it. It's a totally sustainable material. It's like no microplastics. This is pretty much made out of a fat cells of bacteria. So I'm going to use this pagoda tower like outdoors and uh, see how long it will take for the material to decompose. I'll make sure to keep you updated once I know. This successful print inspired me to come back and test 3D lac again. But even with the hotbed on 120C, it's really very hard to remove it. And uh, this is a thin brim that I'm trying to remove here as a test. Uh, imagine like if I had a big 
printed object and the wider brim I think it would still have issues and I don't want to get involved in this so the only way I can recommend using 3D lac is maybe if you have Ultimaker or some sort of a glass bed maybe it makes sense but I don't think it makes sense on Prusa just use big outer brim and uh, inner brim if your object allows for and you'll be fine look here i didn't have any warping at the base you know i think uh, this material wasn't developed for like engineers this this material is probably more suited to kind of artists maybe printing out like testing kind of morphous shapes like this it's a perfect material really like there's just nothing wrong with it for the next test, I was going to print some boxes and I didn't use 3D lac, I only used 8mm brim. So I'm going to print this box out of three pieces. There's going to be bottom piece and uh, two pieces for the top. And so far the print was going well, but you see the thing with Alpha is that issues sometimes reveal themselves at the end of print. So as you can tell, I had a bit of a warping at the base, so brim didn't uh, help me prevent uh, warp fully but you know i think again if i manage to get the ambient temperature lower i think it would contribute for a better print quality maybe even prevent um, warping completely so here i'm just removing the brim and i can already tell that this box will need a little bit of a post-processing um, first I'll just remove the support material this is where that third part is going to interlock and because warping kind of creates a bit of a lip at the base of the print I'm just gonna remove it with a pocket knife no problem so this is how the box looks without uh, any post processing and maybe one thing to mention is that because I'm using black alpha here I think black reveals imperfections the most if I use natural or white it would probably be a little bit better but if you don't care much about perfect finish, if you care more about the function or maybe it's just an iterative printout for your prototype, it's totally fine. You can just use a little bit of sanding paper, a bit of a rough finish. Sometimes it's actually what you're going for. In this case, it's fine. And this is the last test print. I'm using 0.6 millimeter nozzle. This is going to be another box made out of two pieces. It's going to be twice as big as the previous one. Max print speed of this material is around 80 millimeters per second, so you can't use input shaper. And using 0.6 millimeter nozzle made sense to me, although I can already tell that it's not printing as clean as I would have expected it to. But I'm not gonna stop the print because I think it can handle it, so I'll just wait till the end and see what the final result is going to be. And this is how the print is looking after it's finished and yes we have a little bit of a rough surface which indicates warping and uh, i don't know how to explain it because uh, majority of the box was on the supporting material so what causes warp is still a mystery for me but it kind of worked out so here's a bit of a speeded up uh, sequence of the removal of the print and I was really glad to see that even big prints are not very hard to remove as long as you don't use any 3D lac. Be patient and go slowly around all the edges of the print and it will come off easily. This is how print looks like removed from the sheet and the thing that needs to be done now is I need to remove the supports. But no surprises here, everything comes off pretty easy as it would with any other material. And the best thing is that these supports are gonna biodegrade. For what it is, a sustainable material, I still consider it a successful print. If you want a smooth surface finish, you just go with PLA or PETG. But look, after a bit of sanding, it's functional prototype. There's absolutely structurally nothing wrong with it. So it's good. And here you can see both boxes side by side and I think everybody will make conclusion for themselves. Whether it's a material for you, whether it's not, it will depend I think on values, what's important for you. Is sustainability more important than perfect finish? Well, if it is, then maybe why don't you give it a try? And if not, just keep doing what you're doing. For the end, I would like to mention that this material is not very hard to scratch and uh, it's also not very hard to cut so this can be good or can be not very good depends on what your project needs are.
Then with failed prints I used a bit of PVA glue, stick them together and bind in a clamp and 24 hours later I released the clamp and this is the result, so not the toughest joint. I repeated the same test with Gorilla Glue and uh, binded them together in the clamp and again 24 hours later I released the clamp. And I have to say, um, it was not very easy to remove the parts, but I still managed to do it with my bare hands. Thank you for watching this video and I'll keep you posted once I know how long this Pagoda Tower lasts outdoors.